Monster Hunter is a series like no other. Many have attempted to imitate it, but in terms of design and animation, it has no rivals. While the newest entry, Monster Hunter World and its Iceborne expansion are lauded for their realistic visuals, the series has always excelled when it comes to animating fantastical creatures. Rather, what World achieves is congruity between environmental, effects, and monster animation that doesn't just create believable encounters, but a believable world as well. Hello and welcome to the Canopy Effect. This is a studio spotlight on the team behind Monster Hunter World, Iceborne. At the heart of any monster design is functionality. Before anyone has begun to consider what the creature will look like, they first have to consider what sort of challenge it must pose. Then they consider the environment. How will this monster move about? In this way, they're literally thinking about animation before considering the initial design itself. Because of this, monsters always move in a way that make us think, hey, that's natural, despite them being freakish dragons. Like with all animation, reference material is key. These monsters have some basis in reality, mirroring real life creatures or objects and their movement patterns. For instance, while Zenoga is clearly based on a wolf, Legiana was based on an aeroplane, with all of its wing detail allowing it to deeply control the way it moves in the air. This requires a ton of study, with the design and animation teams having made plenty of visits to zoos and aquariums over the years to understand how these creatures move. At the same time, this is still a fancy creature, and so the animators will start sketching ideas of what sort of animations they'd like to see from this monster. So for instance, Glavinus is essentially a big dinosaur with a bigger tail, but one of the early illustrations of it was this one from the Monster Hunter Generations animation stuff, where they decided, before anything else, that Glavinus was going to have a move where it bites its tail, and they decided on what it would look like when it shoots fire. Often, the model of the actual monster isn't complete, so the eager beavers on the animation team will use a different model of a similar looking monster to show off their ideas. Then they'll go over to the technical animators. It's these guys' job to work on the rig, essentially the skeleton of the monster that determines how it can move. And together, they'll work on getting these animations into the game in a way that fits the model of the creature. Animator Michiru Yamamoto actually mentioned that when he's working on a monster, he's thinking of all of the different ways he can beat the hunters. Almost like a dungeon master, he finds that he'll constantly be trying to find ways to make his creation stronger, until someone else has to come and dial it back so that the hunters actually stand a chance. One of the biggest considerations in Monster Hunter is weight, and this is something that was particularly important for Worlds. In World and Iceborne, it's important that the weight of the monsters is constantly addressed through the effects animation when they hit the ground, through the camera shudders, and through their turf war animations. In the past, all real-time monster gameplay in Monster Hunter titles was animated by hand, and motion capture was mainly used for hunters. But for Monster Hunter World, they've started animating the monsters with motion capture during battles. The idea is that someone performs the movements of a monster in a motion capture suit, that data will then form the basis of the monster's movements, which an animator will then go over and adjust. The concept seems silly, but recording someone's movements on all fours is a good way of improving efficiency while also establishing how gravity affects weight. For instance, moving back to Glavinus, it is a creature with a massive tail, and so you can imagine its centre of gravity is a mess. This is something that the animation team paid close attention to, even before trying out motion capture in World. If a Glavinus is tugging at its tail, building up pressure, and about to swing it around, what happens when that tail is heavier than the rest of the body? Yeah, the body gets dragged along with it. But what constitutes for a good animation also means a great gameplay opportunity, since now we have an opening for hunters to attack. Even 
monsters that seem similar can have drastically different animations depending on how a monster balances its own weight. Velkana, Iceborne's flagship monster, will repeatedly jab at hunters with its spear-like tail, but because the tail is much lighter than the body, after each jab it needs to either swing or twist it back to regain balance. However, if you look at Rathalos and Rathian, also dragons, their tails are much heavier, and because of this, they can't really move their tail independently. Therefore, if they want to swing that barbed tail at you, they're going to have to move their entire body, sometimes even flipping upside down just to land a vertical swipe. In the 12 principles of animation, this is follow through, and it's a massive part of Monster Hunter animation. Realistic dispersion of weight is a key part of Monster Hunter, but it does mean there's some drawbacks. For instance, although Monster Hunter World has over 50 monsters to fight, all the skeletal structures, or in CG terms, rigs, are roughly based on each other. I'm not just talking about how Beatodus is basically just an ice version of Duratodus, but that to keep things efficient, rigs for each monster are derived from another monster, and thus, motion capture data is applied in the same way. This is quoted as one of the reasons we aren't seeing insect-like monsters like Neskilla return, since their unique way of moving with six or eight limbs would have to be made from scratch, and motion capture data would be useless. From films to games, animation is personality. In the same way that character animation in an anime gives characters personality, the animation team at Capcom is doing the same for the monsters. I mentioned that each of the monsters' skeletal structures are based on each other, but it's something that we just don't notice naturally. Even seemingly obvious similarities, like Tigrex and Baryoth, feel worlds away when you see them animated. It even gets to the point where the announcement of variant monsters, like the recent Furious Raj and Raging Brachydeos are big deals purely because of the additional animations. There's something seriously intimidating about watching a Brachydeos beat the ground desperately to fill the cavern with lava. Back during the beta for Monster Hunter World, many players remarked on how bad they felt hunting the monsters. After you've dealt a certain amount of damage, most monsters will start limping away exhausted back to their nest, at which point you end up blowing it up or capturing it. But the fact that players felt a pang of regret during a series that has always been about hunting down monsters is a testament to the skill of the animation team. The game's art director, Konami Fujioka, mentioned that as the animations become more realistic, they feel that it becomes more important to emphasise in the story that these fights are necessary for survival. Monster Hunter World was something that animation staff were looking forward to. In generations, the team had a hard time trying to make monsters feel as if they were truly living in these worlds, and having an effect on their environments. Animators at Capcom generally don't stay in their lane. They will go out and chat with gameplay planners, environment artists and designers. So just remember, behind every Rathalos shooting a fireball, or Nergigante swiping its claw, is an animator desperately trying to send you back home in a cart. Thanks for watching the Canopy Effect. I should mention that this video is just about the monster animation team, but the rest of the crew are just as worthy of praise. At the start of production, they divide the animation staff up into the player team and the monster team. The player team do a great job at making sure each of your attacks have impacts, regardless of what weapon you're using, and they're also responsible for the cute Palico Chef animations. So one animation team is finding new ways to kill you, while the other is finding new ways to delight you. But before we go, I'd like to thank these incredible people for supporting the channel on Patreon. In particular, I'd like to thank Austin Hardwick, Dedemeet, Frogkun, Jacob Bosley, JR Pictures, Mike Tamborelli, My Own Mother, Nolan Soga, Shishi, and That Yuan Artist. If you'd like to join these role models in supporting new animation spotlights, please consider visiting patreon.com slash thecanoperaffects.